Today, we are going to cover a visual novel that certainly knows its audience through its absurd, ridiculous comedy. In this otaku high school moe rom-com, watch as these heroines engage each other in thirsty catfights for our main character's affection, as these love triangles heat up in the wacky summer season. Today, we are going to take a look at Sankaku Renai, Love Triangle Trouble. Our main character, Sosuke, spends his average day living life in a small rural town. Together with his little sister Nanaru, his childhood friend Maho, and the other fellow club members of the otaku club, they enjoy geeking out about anime, video games, and other nerdy entertainment. It was supposed to be a tranquil, peaceful month before summer break, that is, before his beloved blood-related sister enters back into his life. Split from each other due to their parents' divorce back when they were children, the two siblings are reunited. It's a celebratory reunion, but his stepsister feels that her territory as the little sister character is being put into jeopardy. And if that wasn't enough, the upstart whirlwind of an upperclassman Sheena suddenly appears to declare her love for Sosuke, much to the annoyance of Maho, even though she rejected him long ago. Sankaku Renai is a very meme visual novel, slapping in your face a buttload of clever inside jokes, absurd dialogue, and enough screen caps to post on r slash memes. The comedy has a very heavy emphasis on inside jokes on the various otaku cultures, ranging from anime, manga, cosplay, and terrible gacha rates. Which means if you aren't knowledgeable on these topics, you won't particularly enjoy this visual novel as much as someone who does. Although that makes me question how someone like that will come across this video or visual novel without some interest in the degenerate dealings of the strange place known as Nihongo Land. There's a lot of flavor and style put into the localization that gives the visual novel that extra sprinkle of fun and enjoyment, both in its normal banter and all the time that pokes fun at tropes. It goes as far as to break the fourth wall with many moments that'll make it go, not even the fuck? There's a lot of care put into this script and it makes the visual novel a notable pickup just to read the dialogue. Sankaku Renai is also surprisingly delicate as well. Well, as delicate as a visual novel with a line such as, Look, if you pull the strings, her vagina opens. Topics from Sheena's anxiousness from trying to join the club, or that uncomfortable atmosphere created by romantic feelings, or just pure jealousy, the visual novel tackles them comfortably. It doesn't go heavy into it, and you shouldn't expect it to, given its lighthearted nature, but I appreciate that it took the time to address the conflicts with its easygoing and laxed approach. Pumaki! <sighs> oh. Oi. There are four main heroine routes and there are two side routes. After the common route, depending on the choices that you make, you'll traverse down one of two routes, the sister route or the love route. If you go down the former, you'll have the option of choosing between Nanaru and Suzu, whereas in the latter, you'll have the option between choosing between Shina and Mako. And through specific decisions, you can enter into the side routes, but these routes aren't that long at all. The production is solid for a light-hearted romantic comedy moe visual novel. The music is standard fare for this type of work with its joyful, uplifting music. And with this one in particular, the essence is focused on the season of summer. The most memorable tracks though are the piano ballads with its sentimental feelings and soft melodies. The background art is also nothing too outstanding to praise it of, but it's also not that bad to make a considerable note out of it. Subjectively speaking, the character designs are very moe, but it also likes to throw in some over-exaggerated facial expressions to go along with the memes. One particular note about the facial expressions is that Sankaku Renai, in my opinion, has some of the cutest blush expressions on the characters. And now, time to talk about the heroines. Nanaru is Sosuke's little sister, and while as crude and brash as she may be, she's still a devoted little non-blood-related little sister. And we take those. It's free real estate. So let me tell you a story about all about how her life got flipped turned upside down and I'd like to take a minute just sit right there and I'll tell you how she became an emotional wreck of a non-blood related little sister. Nanaru is a very high energy and eccentric girl. Her familiar and playful banner with Sosuke can be entertaining to watch and is a representation of the comedy style of Sankaku Renai. If you aren't familiar with the straight man, funny man, comedy duo act, you'll get a lot of it here. Nanaru and Sosuke's sibling banter features the two of them insulting each other to no end with plenty of anime tropes, puns, and horny innuendos. The teasing is an everyday occurrence to them, and nothing would have changed between the two of them. That is, until Suzu enters into their lives. With Suzu entering the family, Nanaru's territory as the resident little sister is threatened, and her route explores her inferiority complex as the non-blood-related little sister. It was actually pretty cute and wholesome to see Nanaru get jealous over this and reveal her more sensitive and innocent side as the two slowly start to develop feelings for each other. Speaking of feelings, the two are about as romantic as a first date to McDonald's, 
Senkaku Renai's H scenes can be one of two types. Either you'll get an H scene with comedic dialogue that kills any semblance of passion and intimacy, or you'll get one that's cute and fluffy. But then again, that's totally within character of the visual novel. As for the other little sister, Suzu, she's a devoted girl who never stopped loving her big brother. Even after their separation, she was never going to give him up. As described by Nanaru, Suzu is the ideal caring little sister character. Gentle, docile, and affectionate, and her character design and expressions capitalize on her cuteness. But she's still as wacky as the regular cast with her knowledge and love for action-adventure anime, as well as whenever she switches into her bloodthirsty side, complete with a whole tone change. <laughs> Despite being apart, her brother's influence still remains a big part of her. She's trying to make up for lost time, and as one might expect from the fallout from a divorce, repairing that strained relationship between siblings is the focus of her route. Love is a complicated thing after all, even more so if it's blood related. Sheena is the wild card character, going full force with her advances towards Sosuke. Her pushiness is honestly a little bit overbearing, but for someone whose signature track is named Machine Gun Talk Typhoon, it's fitting as the catalyst for the romantic hijinks in the club. If Suzu is the rival to Nanaru as the family homewrecker, then Sheena is the rival to Maho as the newly introduced love interest. Sheena's romantic pursuit of Sosuke forces Maho to think about Sosuke regarding her romantic feelings, and in the strangest way, becomes the most significant part of Maho's development, outside of her route. The rival heroines actually turn out to be the best supporting character for the heroine route, while at the same time having significant character development for the rival heroine. And the worst part of it all? Sankaku Ranai makes you feel extremely guilty for choosing the other girl. It's brutal, I tell you, as I drive that stake right into my heart. <laughs> Sheena also fits into the cast as the resident expert of Eroge, or Chinese porn PowerPoint for dudes, if you prefer that. With lots of oddly specific examples and tropes befitting the medium, do expect a lot of fourth wall breaking for the actual visual novel itself. And at these times, these moments aren't even from Sheena herself, but from other characters in the cast. Sankaku Renai is just so blunt and brazen with its self-aware efforts. Like for example, when you immediately meet Sheena, she spoils all the necessary decisions needed to jump onto her route. For as committed Sheena is in her love ventures, I do have some reservations about the pacing in her route. Some of the characterization is developed before they get together, not leaving much content after the fact, and sometimes it feels that the relationship is one-sided. But there's something admirable about her efforts, and the ability to backload all the H scenes at the end of her route. I get out of one H scene, and then 10 minutes later she dumps me right back into another one. Maho has that same familiarity as Nanaru from her role as a childhood friend, but with Maho rejecting Sasuke long ago, that event left a notable mark on their relationship. Despite that rejection long ago, they are still great friends who enjoy playing fighting games together. She's quite the competitive gamer, wiping the floor with her fellow club members and isn't ashamed about it at all. Maho loves fighting games so much that she's willing to stay as long as possible just to practice. It's even covered that she got arrested for staying at the arcade too late. Like, what could you be possibly practicing in the dead of night? You know what? Never mind. Maho's fiery, outgoing, tomboyish attitude is an attractive point to her, which then combined with her embarrassed, flustered side makes for some great contrast. It should be obvious, but it's clear that Maho hasn't gotten over that confession from Sosuke long ago, and only when Sheena starts rearing her head into Sosuke's love affairs that she starts getting defensive about it. In the classic, I don't like him, but I also don't like you going out with him either. Maho coming to terms with her feelings about the whole ordeal is a large part of her route, and I enjoyed her slow yet gradual change to her character. It's also divine retribution as vindication, because one man should not have to go through that terrible tragedy of a rejection. <laughs> anyway, it's a childhood friend route that I like, and her progression and character makes Maho my favorite girl of Sankaku Renai. In conclusion, Sakanku Renai is a visual novel that likes to have fun where you can sit back and enjoy yourself with all of the romantic comedy hijinks. The cast is well rounded in terms of personality and hobbies that they banter off each other very well even with their specific niches. There are some great character interactions between all of the members of the cast 
and even into a route, the visual novel still doesn't forget about them. With all of the characters' unique quirks combined with their in-depth knowledge of their hobbies, the visual novel creates some wholesome comedic fun, whether it's from teasing each other or from poking fun at various anime slash game tropes. And that's in addition to the memetic personality Sankaku Ranai has from the script and dialogue. Sankaku Ranai also takes on conflicts surrounding our socially inept gamers. It does a solid job traversing its sensitive romantic side. Sure, moments can be comedically dragged out, but these moments are still meaningful and most of all, completely in character of the visual novel. Because while these characters aren't the most socially capable or behave like typical normies, these characters can still fall in love just like any other individual. Yes, there is love for all nerds out there. You just need to find it. Or your little sister. I give Sankaku Renai a 4 out of 5 with a seal of recommendation. Subscribe if you liked the video and want to see more. Check back every week for new content. And don't forget to check out some of my other videos if you are interested.